Hi, Vinny Lavodi here, Tech Support and Enabling Devices. Today I'd like to talk to you about some items that we get a lot of questions asked by our customers. These are battery interrupters. What are they and what do they do? Today we're going to talk about two of our most popular battery interrupters. This is item number 640 for AA batteries and item 641 for C and D size batteries. Today I'm going to give you an overview on how to use these battery interrupters and what to look for when you're shopping for toys that you want to adapt yourself. We're also going to touch on our number 605 switch modifier which you can utilize with the battery interrupters and they will give you some nice added functions and features when you're adapting your own toys. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to start with our number 640 uh, AA battery interrupter. I'll just show you real quick what the interrupter looks like. It's basically about a 6 or 8 inch connection wire. There's two copper discs on each side and they're wafered in the middle with a non-conductive material and that's where your switch will come in. This is a standard 1 8 inch female mono input jack which all the switches use today. So basically what a battery interrupter does is in essence what the name says it actually interrupts power to the battery and the way you re-enable that power is through the use of a switch or capability or ability switch as they're called. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a, a simple toy. This is a, a little fan. It has a simple on off switch. Um, I have two AA batteries in here already. Okay. One way you, to check when you're looking at a toy is if it has a simple on off switch like this, turn it on, the fan comes on, shut it off, the fan goes off. This, is, this will definitely work with the battery interrupter. So what you want to do is open up your battery compartment, take out just one, one battery, you only need one interrupt per, per device or toy, and you're going to take this disc and you're going to put it between the spring and the battery case. You can also use the positive side if the case allows it to make contact on both sides. Basically whichever makes the best contact and the easiest to insert is what you're going to use. But 90% of the time it's going to be the back, the negative side. So I just slipped my disc in. This disc is actually sandwiched between the back, the negative side of the battery, and then your spring in the battery compartment. So it's, it's the in-between. So it's basically interrupting the power between those two contact points. So you close your battery compartment. Now on some devices and toys you may not be able to close the battery compartment. You want to test to make sure that your interrupter does work before you may have to cut a little notch or something to make the battery compartment close, but for our purposes right now it seems to be okay. Okay, once we have our battery interrupter in place, you're going to want to turn the devices or toys on off switch to on, okay? And then you're going to want to connect your switch to the interrupter jack. Now once that's in place, then you can activate your switch and it should work. So once I let go, it turns off. This is a momentary, basic momentary capability switch. One other thing you can do if you want to use this where it would sustain and activate and stay on, you can use one of these other products that we actually sell. This is called a switch modifier. It's item or catalog number 605 in our catalog and on our website. This takes a, a 9 volt battery, an alkaline battery, and what this does is it modifies what the switch does to your toy or device. Um, it comes with a double ended cable, which you're going to need. Um, these are all labeled your input jacks. There's two jacks on here. You plug your double ended cable into the jack mark device. Okay. Then the other end of that cable is going to plug into your um, battery interrupter. Okay, and then there's an additional jack here on top marked for your switch. Now, there's three modes on this. There's momentary, which is what the switch already does, um, time, and latch. Uh, time will allow you to run a connected device anywhere from one second up to two minutes, um, whereas once that time or duration that's been set runs out, the device will shut off. You'll have to reactivate your switch in order for it to resume and it will run for that same amount of duration before it shuts off. The latch mode basically works like a light switch. Turn the unit on. 
One switch activation starts the device, it keeps running continuous. Hit the switch again, it shuts it off. Now this is great for radios or could be great for fans or some other devices. Um, I'll show you what the timer mode does. It's in timer mode now. It should only run for about three, two or three seconds before it shuts off. Hit the switch again. And there you go.